All right, America, buckle up. We're diving headfirst into the wild, wacky, and occasionally wig-wearing world of U.S. presidential elections. Our story begins in 1789. Fresh off a revolution and sporting some truly magnificent hair, George Washington becomes the first president. No primaries, no debates, no attack ads. He was basically elected by popular acclaim. I mean, who else were they going to pick? Benedict Arnold? Now, you might think, unanimous election, that's boring, but hold your horses. This was a monumental moment. The founding fathers, those powdered-wigged pioneers, had created a system of government unlike any other. A system where power resided not in a king or queen, but in the hands of the people. And those people in their infinite wisdom chose a leader who could unite a nation and set the stage for centuries of, well, let's just say spirited elections to come. Fast forward four years, it's 1792, and guess what? Washington gets re-elected. Shocker, right? Look, the man was about as popular as a free beer at a Philadelphia Eagles game, but this election wasn't just a repeat performance. It solidified the peaceful transfer of power, a concept so radical at the time it would make your average 18th century monarch spontaneously combust. Think about it, no coups, no bloodshed, just a smooth transition from one term to the next. It was a powerful precedent, a beacon of hope for democracies around the world. Of course, this being American politics, things wouldn't stay peachy forever. Oh no, my friends, the drama was just beginning. The seeds of political rivalry were about to be sown, and trust me, those seeds were about to grow into some seriously gnarly weeds. 1796, the year the political gloves came off, John Adams, Washington's trusty VP, squares off against Thomas Jefferson. Now these guys weren't just political rivals, they were ideological heavyweights, slugging it out over the very soul of the nation. Adams, representing the Federalists, favored a strong central government. Jefferson, the champion of the Democratic Republicans, believed in states' rights. This wasn't just a friendly debate over tea and crumpets, folks. This was full-blown political warfare, complete with mudslinging, propaganda, and enough backroom dealing to make Machiavelli blush. Newspapers became weapons, each side accusing the other of everything from treason to having a severe lack of fashion sense. The point is, the seeds of partisanship had been sown, and boy were they growing like weeds on miracle Grow. As the 19th century rolled in, those gnarly weeds of partisanship we talked about, they blossomed into a full-blown two-party system. You had the Democratic Republicans, the cool kids on the block after Jefferson's victory in 1800, but hold on, don't think they had it easy. A new challenger emerged from the primordial soup of American politics, the Whig Party. The Whigs, named after the British political faction opposed to absolute monarchy, history buffs, take note, attracted a diverse group of voters from wealthy industrialists to evangelical reformers. They believed in a more active government role in promoting economic development and social progress. Think of it like this. The Democratic Republicans were all about individual liberty and limited government, while the Whigs were more into using government power to shape the nation's destiny. It was a classic political showdown, setting the stage for decades of fierce competition and ideological clashes. Section 5. Jacksonian Democracy power to the people. Hold on to your hats, folks, because the 1820s brought a political earthquake. Andrew Jackson, the fiery war hero and all-around badass, burst onto the scene. He rode a wave of popular support from everyday Americans, particularly in the expanding western frontier, all the way to the White House. This wasn't just another election, it was a revolution. Well, a political revolution, at least. Jackson's presidency ushered in an era known as Jacksonian democracy. He championed the common man, expanded suffrage, that's the right to vote, for you non-history buffs, and battled against the elites he believed were holding the nation back. His presidency also saw the rise of the modern Democratic Party. Yes, the same one we know and, um, have complicated feelings about today. Jackson's legacy is a mixed bag, with some praising his commitment to democracy, and others criticizing his policies towards Native Americans. However, one thing's for sure, he left an indelible mark on American politics, shaping the political landscape for generations to come. Section 6. A House Divided, Lincoln and the Civil War. Okay, time for the elephant, or rather, the nearly split-in-half elephant, in the room, the Civil War. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln, a relatively unknown lawyer from Illinois with a killer beard game, was elected president. 
His platform, preventing the expansion of slavery. The South's reaction, we're out of here. Lincoln's election ignited the powder keg of sectional tensions, leading to the secession of 11 Southern states and the bloodiest conflict in American history. Lincoln, facing the greatest crisis in the nation's history, led the Union to victory, while simultaneously issuing the Emancipation Proclamation, a document that changed the course of the war and the nation. The Civil War was a defining moment, a brutal test of the very principles of liberty and equality upon which the United States was founded. Section 7, The Progressive Era and the New Deal. The late 19th and early 20th centuries were a time of massive change. Industrialization transformed America, but it also created new challenges, inequality, corruption, and social unrest. Enter the Progressive Era, a period of social and political reform aimed at addressing these issues. Presidents like Theodore Roosevelt, the trust-busting, big-stick-wielding cowboy, and Woodrow Wilson, the scholarly advocate for internationalism, left their mark on the presidency. But it was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR, who truly redefined the role of the federal government during the Great Depression. His New Deal programs, aimed at providing relief, recovery, and reform, forever altered the relationship between the government and the people. Love him or hate him, there's no denying FDR's impact on American politics. He won an unprecedented four terms, navigated the country through the Depression and World War II, and fundamentally reshaped the role of the presidency. Section 8, The Post-War World and the Cold War. World War II ended, but a new conflict emerged, the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union, two superpowers with very different ideologies, locked horns in a global chess match that lasted nearly half a century. Presidents like Dwight Eisenhower, the stoic general who led the nation to victory in Europe, and John F. Kennedy, the young charismatic leader who promised a new frontier, found themselves navigating the treacherous waters of the Cold War, facing challenges like the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Vietnam War. Meanwhile, back at home, the civil rights movement gained momentum, challenging the nation to live up to its ideals of equality and justice for all. Lyndon B. Johnson, Kennedy's successor, signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, landmark legislation that aimed to dismantle segregation and ensure equal rights for African Americans. The Cold War and the Civil Rights Movement defined an era shaping both America's role in the world and its struggle for equality at home. Section 9, From Reagan to Clinton, A Time of Change The 1980s saw the rise of Ronald Reagan, the former actor-turned-politician whose sunny disposition and conservative policies ushered in an era of renewed American confidence, or depending on who you ask, a sharp turn to the right. His presidency marked a shift in the political landscape, with Republicans gaining ground and Democrats struggling to adapt. But just when you thought you had it all figured out, along came Bill Clinton. The saxophone-playing Southern charmer from Arkansas defied expectations, winning the presidency in 1992 and ushering in an era of economic prosperity and relative peace. Clinton's presidency, however, was not without its scandals, most notably the Monica Lewinsky affair, which led to his impeachment by the House of Representatives, though he was acquitted by the Senate. The 1980s and 1990s were a time of political upheaval and cultural change, setting the stage for the even more tumultuous 21st century. Section 10. The 21st Century. A New Millennium, New Challenges. The new millennium dawned with the extremely close and contested election of 2000, which saw George W. Bush declared the winner after a legal battle that went to the Supreme Court. Bush's presidency was defined by the September 11th terrorist attacks, leading to wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. In 2008, Barack Obama made history as the first African-American president, inheriting an economic crisis and two wars. The 21st century has seen rapid change, technological advancement, and political polarization. The United States has faced numerous challenges, from terrorism to a global pandemic. Yet, the American experiment in democracy has endured, a testament to its resilience. The future of American democracy. And so, dear viewers, we arrive at the present moment, the year 2024, a year that promises to be, shall we say, interesting. The political landscape is more divided than ever, the issues facing the nation are complex, and the upcoming election, it's shaping up to be a doozy. On one side, you have Donald Trump, 
On the other side, Kamala Harris, vying to become the first female president. The future of American democracy depends on the active participation of its citizens. It depends on our willingness to engage in thoughtful debate and work together. The history of U.S. elections is a testament to democracy. So stay informed, stay engaged, and remember to vote. This is Olakara TV.